வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு கலி கிளாஸ் ரூம் திஸ் இஸ் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் லெக்சர் இந்த சாப்டர் ரீசோர்சஸ் அண்ட் டெவலப்மெண்ட் இன் 10th ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் சிபிஎஸ்இ ஜியாகிரபி சாப்டர் 1 ரீசோர்சஸ் அண்ட் டெவலப்மெண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் अवर ஃபர்ஸ்ட் லெக்சர் बिफोर वी கெட் இன்டு திஸ் லெக்சர் லெட் us look at how many lectures it will take in order to complete this unit resources and development we are going to take four separate lectures to complete the unit of resources and development the first lecture will deal with what are resources and what are the different types of classification of resources okay the second and the third lecture will deal with how these resources should be maintained what is sustainable development what is the world community doing in order to uh, develop these resources in order to cultivate and maintain these resources you know what is the world community is doing to preserve these resources in the third lecture we will study about the different resources of india in the third lecture we will study about the different resources in india in the final lecture in the final lecture we will study about soil resource what are the different types of soils what are the different nutrients present in the soils where are these different types of soils present in the whole of india where are these different types of soils present in the whole of india right let us start the first lecture which is natural resources and the classification of natural resources what are natural resources natural resources are endowments sir what is the meaning of endowments endowments means gifts natural gifts sir who are receiving these gifts the humans the human kind is receiving these gifts so natural endowments in the form of land water vegetation and minerals land water vegetation and minerals that are being used by the humans and these resources are converted to more valuable products that can be directly used by the humans so the resources are converted into direct products sir give an example iron ore is a resource that we are taking from the earth using this iron steel is being made this steel is used in turn to make a lot of steel utensils so iron ore is the resource steel utensil is the final product that is developed from the iron ore okay sir how should these resources be what should be the nature of these resources what should be the characteristics of these resources the resources must be technologically accessible economically feasible and culturally acceptable technologically you must be able to get these resources out of their place and put them to use economically it, they should be feasible it should be cheap it should not be very very costly culturally acceptable the resources must be accepted by us with respect to our culture resources are nothing but a function of human activities each and every human activities involve some kind of a resource so resource forms the basis of all human activities that's basically the definition of natural resource the natural resources can be classified on the basis of different things in fact there are different types of resources are classified as follows on the basis of origin from where are we getting these resources on the basis of origin we can classify the resources as biotic resources abiotic resources biotic resources means resources that are got from the living things like flora and fauna what is flora and fauna sir flora means plant resources fauna means animal resources fisheries fishes that are present in the water and human beings are also resources livestock means domestic animals that we are growing in our homes these can be classified as biotic resources abiotic resources means resources that are non living things like rocks and minerals iron ore is a good example for a abiotic resource that's the classification based on origin what about the classification based on exhaustibility what is exhaustibility exhaustibility is the property by which a resource can become extinct 
exhaustibility is a property exhaustibility is a property by which a resource can uh, get extinct it can go uh, it can get finished off it can get finished off okay on the basis of exhaustibility there are renewable resources and non renewable resources in renewable resources the resources can be renewed or reproduced and used again and again by the use of physical chemical and mechanized methods different types of renewable resources are solar energy wind energy water and forest water forest and wildlife sir these resources can be reproduced again and again yes for example we can again and again use wind, uh, solar energy using solar panels and get electricity from it what about non renewable resources resources that can occur over a very long geological period it takes thousands and thousands of years to form non renewable resource is not immediately formed it takes thousands and thousands of years to form and a lot of times it cannot be renewed okay what are different types of non renewable resources minerals fossil fuels and metals in this the fossil fuels are non renewable you will not be able to renew fossil fuels let's say you are putting some petrol in your vehicle you will not be able to renew the petrol and use it once more after you have used it up after you have used up the petrol you are not going to renew it but you can renew the metals you can recycle the metals let's say you have an aluminium pan once the aluminium pan gets old you will simply sell it to the uh, the fellow who is getting it the old paper fellow so you will simply sell it to the recycling uh, station or recycling shops they will recycle the aluminium sell it to the factories that will get converted into a new pan and that the aluminium will be reused again and again the aluminium will be reused again and again so on the basis of exhaustibility there are renewable resources and non renewable resources okay sir what is the third type of classification the third type of classification is based on ownership based on ownership there are individual resources community resources national resources and international resources individual resources are owned by a particular individual for example if you are doing farming obviously you are doing the farming in your own land that particular land and the water in the well of the land right if you have land obviously you have some kind of a well either a open well or a bore well and you have water in it. that and you have water in it. that particular resource is your own resource or individual resource so individual resources are owned by individuals example farmlands pasture lands etc what about community resources resources that can be accessed resources that can be used by a particular community for example community grazing lands in villages there will be a particular area where all the people of the village will be bringing their cattle to graze that can be called as community grazing lands also we will we are burying our dead in the same place at a community space that is called as a burial ground those can be classified under community resources sir what about national resources all the resources land water minerals that are found within the political borders of a country are called as national resources in fact all the resources that are about 12 nautical miles from the borders of the country into the ocean all the resources that are present within 12 nautical miles from the borders of the country into the ocean also are included in the national resources in fact the 12 nautical mile space or 19.2 kilometers 12 nautical miles can be interpreted as 19.2 kilometers it is called as territorial waters and all the resources found in the territorial waters belong to the nation all the nation has legal powers for what does the nation has legal powers to acquire private property for public good to acquire private property for public good what about international resources sir resources that are present uh, let's say 200 nautical miles away from any political border 200 nautical miles 
away from any country within the ocean those come under international resources in order to use those resources you need to take permission you need to take concurrence with the international institutions you need to take permission or concurrence with the international institutions right that's resources classified on the basis of ownership what is the final classification of resources the resources can be also classified on the basis of their development on the status of their development what is the condition in which the resource is present what is the condition in which the resource is present either uh, can the resource be used immediately can the resource uh, be used uh, immediately Wait, okay for there are potential resources developed resources stock resources and reserve resources okay what are potential resources potential resources are resources that are found in a region but are not utilized they are found in a region these resources are present somewhere but they are not yet utilized you are not using them okay sir give me an example there are a lot of potential for the development of wind power in Gujarat and Rajasthan in Gujarat and Rajasthan there is enormous potential there is enormous possibility for you to develop wind energy in Gujarat and Rajasthan but you are not yet utilizing it it is called as a potential resource what about developed resources sir resources that are surveyed you know what kind of a resource is present there it has been surveyed also you know what type of resource is there what is the quality of it and how much resource is there what is the quantity of it and how much resource is there what is the quantity of it all this has been determined for utilization has been determined for utilization such type of resource is developed resource okay what about stock resources sir stock resources means these materials are present in the environment and they do have the potential to satisfy human needs but you do not have the technology for what don't i have the technology for using these resources for accessing these resources for putting these resources to work for you you don't yet have the technology oh those are called as stock resources they have the potential to satisfy human needs but you do not have the technology human beings do not have the technology to access them to put those resources to use good example is h2 and o2 hydrogen and oxygen have a good potential to be used as fuel but hydrogen and oxygen uh, they will burn like anything in fact in chemistry you have studied that hydrogen burns with a popping sound hydrogen burns with a popping sound sir why is hydrogen burning with a popping sound hydrogen is burning with a popping sound because it is literally going boom it's literally blasting once hydrogen is coming into heat hydrogen is literally undergoing a blast undergoing explosion and you are hearing it has a popping sound so hydrogen burns with a popping sound instantaneous combustion that's basically blasting okay sir but because we are not able to control with the combustion of hydrogen and oxygen we are not yet using them as fuels we are not yet using them as fuels so we do not have the technology to access hydrogen and oxygen they are called as stock resources even though they do have a lot of potential sir what is the last type of resource reserve resource they are subset of stock resources what is subset a category they are a subset of stock resources they are a category of stock resources they can be put to use with the existing technology but we are not right now using them reserve resources can be used with the current technology but it's in reserve you have not yet started using them sir give me a good example for reserved resources reserved resources limited use of river water for generating hydroelectricity india has a lot of rivers if you are going to put a lot of hydroelectric plant in all these rivers you can generate so much electricity so but okay you can generate so much electricity but you are not doing this they have not started putting that many hydroelectric power plants on all the rivers 
so that can be classified as reserved resources or reserve resources right that's basically the end of our lecture on the basis of status of development resources can be classified into four types potential resources developed resources stock resources reserve resources sir what should i give more importance while studying this particular lecture while studying this particular lecture give importance to stock resources it is a important board question uh, it is a two mark what are stock resources what are reserve resources or uh, is also an important two mark also study what are natural resources as a two mark what are natural resources as a two mark that's basically the end of our lecture hope you guys enjoyed the lecture obviously if you like the lecture subscribe to us click the bell icon and spread the word uh, let us grow together cheers and thank you tamman cheers and thank you cheers cheers and thank you